Okay, so we're at the back entrance of the basement development. Um, on this back wall here, I want to make some wood build-ins. I'm um, going to match a similar design that I've done upstairs. Uh, creates kind of like an individual locker, a uh, spot to put shoes in the bottom, and a bench to sit down to put your shoes on. So, you know, the uh, cubbies at the bottom are about that high, then it's a bench, and then two individual lockers, and then two spots at the top to put gloves or whatever, whatever you feel necessary. So, um, what I'm gonna do, um, same as I did for my bathroom cabinet, I like to start by building a base. Um, very similar height, uh, same proportions for the distance of the toe kick. Um, so I just need to start by measuring this whole area up. Then I'll go out to the garage, uh, use my table saw, miter saw to cut the different components. And then we'll come down here and uh, proceed with fitting it all together, gluing it and nailing it. and. Uh, um, then I should have a nice finished building on the back wall here. Okay, so I'm um, back from the garage. I've got all my uh, cutting list cut. Um, for this project, I've used, uh, I'm using one inch thick board, um, using some uh, standard trim pieces just to dress up the wood a little bit. Um, and I've built uh, just, a, just a base like I did in my um, bathroom cabinet, except I used uh, two by six cut down to size as the studding here, I just ran out of three quarter. It truly doesn't matter what type of uh, wood you use for the studding there. So, um, so here it is. This is my base for the building. This is going to be the top that I put on top of the base. These three pieces are my bottom um, shelf dividers or cubby dividers. This is the next piece that will go on top of these three dividers. It actually is about an inch longer than the piece below it, so it creates kind of a reveal. These are going to be my three side gables going up. Um, here is the uh, back ledger boards for the uh, two shelves to sit on, on top of. Um, also got a nice trim piece to go across the front of these shelves just to hide all the raw ends. And then finally our, our top um, with our nice crown uh, piece to finish. So I'm um, going to proceed with uh, taking the base um, into the space, um, leveling it, making sure it's good, and then uh, gluing and nailing all the pieces together. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. Okay, so I've got my cordless drill, some three inch screws, my level, and some cedar shims. Um, narrow, getting thicker at the end, just to level the base in. Um, so I'm just gonna drag the base into the corner here, use my two foot level, because my four foot level won't fit in here. I'm gonna get it shimmed and perfectly level, and then screw it to the wall. Okay, kind of a tight fit. Um, you can see that uh, I've just got primer coat on my walls. 
Um, you definitely don't want to start doing your buildings after your finished paint is done because you can see you nick the walls and all that kind of stuff. So um, all good. I got my two foot level here. I can see that the um, this side needs to go up. Just gonna use my cedar shims. Okay, so um, you can see that the concrete here is, uh, is a quarter inch out. I've uh, had to lift that side of the toe kick up a quarter of an inch just to make this level. That side's perfect now. And that side's looking good as well. So uh, I've got my basin level. I'm just gonna proceed with uh, my three inch screws. Attaching it in a few spots to the bottom plate in the wall. Okay, so the base is leveled and screwed down. I'm gonna proceed with uh, putting the top piece to cover up the base. Okay, so I'm just going to glue the top of my base and set my top on top of the glue and then fire some two inch finishing nails down through the top into the base. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Just gonna use my nailer now, fasten it down. Okay, so you don't have to go crazy with the amount of nails. The nice thing about this building design is that a lot of the force is just downward on it. Um, so it's not involving sheer force or anything crazy until you get up to the shelf, which I've made a ledger for. So all the force on this base is downward, so don't go crazy with your nailing. Okay, so now that I've got the bottom securely fastened, I'm gonna grab my three side pieces, uh, get those in position, and then put the top on top of that. Okay, so one of these pieces on each side. Make sure you're flush down here before you glue and nail it. Same thing down on this side. Make sure you're flush and, and, and even. Um, and then uh, put some center marks so that you can center this piece perfectly in the center. So. Just gonna attach these side pieces first.
Okay, so finding your center is very important. I've got some tile going down here, which I'm gonna have a center grout line, so I really do want the center grout line of my tile to hit this center shelf, and then when it goes up to be in line with the center recessed pot lighting that's above. So quite important that this mark is identical or perfectly centered. So I got 47 and an eighth. Gonna square a line on that so that uh, I know where to apply my glue. So if um, if this base is level, which we know it is, then using a square on the level side or the horizontal side will give me a square line that is also level. So, Just shot a couple uh, finishing nails, um, just to steady this piece. Uh, it's it's going to rely again on mostly the glue, um, and it's a downward force, so we're good for that. So um, now I'm going to go get the top for this, um, glue down that edge, and then run some nails down into the top. Okay, so this is the uh, top piece for on top of the bottom cubbies. Um, I've got it one inch wider than the lower pieces just so that I don't have to flush up with the with the pieces I just I'm gonna have a one inch overhang so got my glue Okay, so that's fitted in nice. I'm just gonna put a couple nails down into the top of it. Okay, so I've marked my center line again on the top here, and I got my square just resting on this back line. I'm just gonna give myself an indicator line to be able to hit the nails down into the center of this piece.
Okay, so now that I've got my bottom structure assembled, uh, I've just got my side pieces, which are gonna go right to the ceiling, minus that one inch thickness for the top piece. So I've got the, the strips cut to the width, which was one foot Why? I'm just gonna measure now, reduce it by one inch plus an eighth, just so that I've got some uh, fitting clearance. So. Okay, so here's my three um, gable side pieces. Just gonna uh, fit them in to see that I've correctly left the gap at the ceiling to fit the last top wood piece in. Then I'll bring the wood top piece in, slam the two side pieces into position, uh, which will then hold the one up at the ceiling until I can uh, get the nails all in, so. Okay, so these are both cut at the right height. I'm just gonna tip them on the angle a little bit. Uh, bring in my top, well, then I'm gonna put some glue up on the top here. Bring my top piece in, get it on top of here, up to the ceiling, and then push these gables in underneath so that it holds the top piece in. Some of the drywall tape in the way, so I just don't want the ceiling to be, or the ceiling board to be affected when I try to put it up there, so. Got my glue. Just so gonna put a little bead on the bottom. We'll beat at the top. And then these pieces, I'll just shoot some nails into the uh, sidewall. Um, that should be good enough to hold them in. Okay, so that looks good to me. I'm just gonna nail these side pieces in, fit my center gable in, glue that in, and then proceed with putting my shelf in. Now I know for attaching this side piece that if I'm shooting on the inside corner, I'm going to hit the same stud that the drywall did on the inside corner. So uh, this is one of those areas that uh, I knew I was gonna put a build-in in, so there is some wood backing in the corner for the nails to accept. Um, if you're not sure you're going to hit some stuff, use some construction adhesive on the back side of everything just so you've got a nice glue tight fit to the wall.
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, if you've got some inconsistencies, which I do have as well, um, you can see here I'm not right tight against the wall. I'm going to fill that in with some painting caulking. Um, same thing with along the back edge of the wall. It's very tough when you're cutting um, wood, it gets cut perfectly straight and the walls are not perfectly even so um, you could take the time to cut the back edge of all the wood to make it fit tightly against the wall. Um, if we're using paint grade products, which I am, that are just going to get painted after, it's just as easy to run a caulking bead that's paintable to make that inside corner appear perfectly clean. Um, and then when you spray it with your paint, it'll look flawless. So um, now I'm just going to measure for the centerpiece. Um, I've got my line at the bottom already, which is nice. I've just got to um, reference a line to the top. So now I've got my four foot level. I'm just going to run a level line up the center here so that I know where to put the center gable. Okay, so that fits nice. Um, I'm on my center line at the bottom, I'm on my center line at the top. Uh, to get this one to hold in for now, uh, until I get my shelf pieces in, I'm not going to even use a nail to hold this one in. I'm just going to put a bead of glue at the bottom um, and try to get a bead of glue in at the top as well. Um, then when I put my um, shelves in here, there's going to be a bracket on the wall that will hold the gable in its perfect position as well as a trim piece across the front that will do the same. Okay, so I'm on my uh, pencil lines in the perfect center positioning. Um, now I'm going to mark out my shelf height and attach my shelf bracket to the back wall. Okay, so I'm going to make the lines on the top here for the shelf location. I'm going to use 12 inches down from the uh, top board. Uh, I know that this is perfectly level because my base is level, so I don't really need to use my level. I'm just going to put some indicator points um, up in the top here and work off those. So I've just got my 12 in inches measured down. I don't know if this, the top is perfectly level. 
So I'm going to now mark up to this and then I'll know my bottom measurement up to the, to the shelf. And then I can transfer that around. Okay, so when I attach these shelves, I'm not going to use glue between them because I do have a front trim piece that's going to hold the weight of the shelf. I will be putting glue on that one and I'm going to have a ledger board that is against the wall um, holding the force of the shelf, um, it's downward force. So um, now I'm just going to measure up these back ledger pieces and my widths for my shelves and go cut those and fit them in here. So these are my back wall ledger pieces. Um, you can see they're just uh, the same trim pieces we're using for the casing around the windows and doors. So it's kind of a nice feature that your trim pieces that are on your buildings match stuff that's in your house just to give it like good flow. So I'm just gonna begin to stick these in. Uh, I've measured them very tight so hopefully they'll just float up there so that I can get the shelves in and kind of line everything up before I final set it, so. Okay, so you can see I've got some really tight fitting pieces here. Um, just going to get my level, verify that they're sitting good. Then I've got this final trim piece that goes on the front, um, which will get nailed into the ends and into the face of the shelf to hold the front of the shelf. Then once I'm happy with the level and everything like that, I'll adjust these back pieces until they're level and then attach them to the wall. And then I've just got one final trim piece to go along the top here and uh, this unit will be ready for sanding and prepping for paint. So. Okay, so my front trim piece is leveled, so I'm going to nail it in position. Okay, now that I've got my front trim piece leveled, I'm going to bring the front edge of my shelf flush with this top edge and then shoot some nails into the face of that. Okay, so we're all attached at the front. I'm just going to level from the front to the back and make sure we're good there. 
shoot a couple final nails into this back ledger piece. Okay, so you can see here that, um, that I've got my shelf in nice and level. I've attached it down into the wall. Um, I uh, got these brad nails hitting into, into some studding back here. Um, so this centerpiece is now not needed to have any fasteners at the top because it's all wedged in quite tight with, with the shelving unit. All that's left is just to measure the uh, top trim piece and nail that on. Okay, I got 46 and 15 16 for this top width. When I'm using something um, like a trim piece to clean up the front of an edge, I like to cut it just slightly larger than the space that I'm in so that I have to flex it in and, and then push the center down. Um, that ensures just a really, really tight fit to the drywall. I'm not sure if you noticed when I was putting this piece on that I had to wedge the one side in and curve it to get the other side in without scraping the drywall. But you can see here how nice and tight that is to the wall. So, um, like I said, a piece like this, I would always oversize a slight little bit so that uh, I would, so that I have to flex it inward. Just uh, seems to get a better result that way. Got my top trim piece all ready to go. Cut to size, you can see it's got a nice profile on it just to give it a little bit of a, you know, presence at the top of it, just a nice architectural detail. It's gonna use some wood glue um, on the trim piece itself. Now when you're um, doing gluing something on flat to another piece, um, if I leave my glue like this, um, it in fact won't get a nice tight suction fit. So I always, uh, it's a little messy, but I always run my finger down it just to smooth it out. So I'm getting that real tight finish. If you're doing something in your shop and you're using clamps, um, you can squeeze it tight and the glue will squeeze out, but it's still really good practice to uh, smooth your glue down. So, so again, I'm going to fit it in tight on this corner and I'm going to kind of flex the other side in. Okay. So you can see here that uh, I'm very tight on each side and it's, it's flexed in the corner. So when I pop that into position, put a couple nails in it, uh, the glue and nails will hold it in nice and tight and uh, just got a great finish against the walls there. So that's what you're looking for. So I've got this all nailed and glued together. Um, as you can see, it's an outstanding feature to the back door here. Uh, tons of storage for shoes. Um, I, I'm going to put uh, two hooks on each side and one bigger hook down in the center to hold backpacks and lots of storage up at the top here for baseball hats and gloves. So. Um, what I'm going to proceed with next is uh, sanding down all the edges 
um, patching all the nail holes and caulking uh, the wood to drywall areas just to get rid of the um, joint that's there. Um, and then once all the paint is dry, I'll proceed with putting my hardware on and uh, it should be ready to be used.